Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Stephen Cuoco. At what point did you realize when you started looking into public relations, started looking into casting? You know what, Stephen? I'm pretty damn good at this. I think we should. <laughs> I think we should. Uh, we should keep following this path. It really is effortless, Donovan. I mean, it's. It would be the same of how you do your show. When you bring your all to the table with great intentions and no expectations, it just makes life fun and it makes the career of choice fun. My goal is to get on Big Brother. I want to be on that show in the worst way. You heard it here. He wants on, yeah. big brother. I want listening. on. You know, there was recently a big uh, social media challenge of people putting mustard on watermelon and eating what? it. Did you try that? No, I never even heard of that. No. Yeah, it's like you, Steve. We normally don't go that far to bring in the rest of the part of the interview I had with Mr. Donovan on the How Did Show. But this time I wanted to do it. It, it felt special. We've got Jeffrey Earnhardt here today. I've been having a great time getting to know this guy. He's an incredible person. Awesome human being. One of the most kindest people in the world and such a gentleman. I'm going to tell you, he's going to make a great husband, a great father, just an all-around awesome person. Awesome, awesome, awesome human being. We're going to get to that introduction. Right now, what I'm going to share is tip of the day, tip of the year, tip of the month, whatever you want to apply this to. Here's my opening thought to you. We only have one body in this life. One chance to protect and nourish the vessel we live in. One chance to treat ourselves with love and respect. You matter and how you show up for yourself and push yourself every day matters. And that's important. Don't take anything that you can do for yourself for granted. Because honestly, you can do whatever you want. You can make life however you want. And it really is something I had to pick up my vehicle today from the dealership and I had this most incredible Uber ride down there. And when I first put in my request, it wasn't going through. I'm here waiting six minutes. I thought, oh my God, there's no traffic. I got to get down here. I want to get my car. I'm interviewing Jeffrey Earnhardt today. Got this interview going on. Just got invited to another event over up at the uh, Speedway by Davey Hamilton Jr. He's got the open wheel showdown happening. Heading on over there today to support and do my journalist media you know, brilliance over there and network and find those stories. And yes, we're going to have Davey Hamilton Jr. on as a guest in an upcoming interview, if not this week, hopefully next week. And... What was amazing is that drive. I'm glad I didn't get that happening. That didn't go through the first time that I canceled the ride and then rebooked the ride again through Uber. And that was the most phenomenal seven, maybe even 10 minutes of a conversation of chatting with this, uh, his name's Bon, B-O-N. And just the energy, we're talking about energy and the way he cares for himself. He works in the medical industry. His wife works in ICU. I'm like, what are you doing driving an Uber? Like, you can't need the money. <laughs> you guys can't need money. But you never know. We don't know people's financial situations. I mean, honestly, there are tons of people in this world that are perceived as being mega multimillionaires and famous and rich and everything else, but they have no idea what goes on behind the scenes to sustain that. However, it was very kind. He's a second Uber driver that gave me his number, but for him, I said, would you be interested in being my private driver? Because I said, sometimes getting an Uber isn't always easy. Sometimes depending on the day, I want to get somewhere faster also, I have friends that come to town. They don't want to have to deal with limo services and deal with all the, the hype of how Vegas charges tourists here. 
So they really want to to be more of having that local experience and and not feel like they're being taken advantage of. So I'm extremely happy to have now another Uber driver, but someone I know that not only am I looking forward to hopefully building a friendship with, we really connected, but also someone that I can help enrich his life. And I know he's or has enriched mine and, and we will continue. And I'm excited to really, really continue to just every day, like my day was not planned. I did not plan to have to have my car in a shop, make a long story short, three's a charm. This time, the third time around, I ended up with a nail in a tire, but instead of it in the grooves, in the trim, it ended up in the sidewall. So I'm glad I didn't deal with the blowout. I didn't have to deal with, and this was at night I ended up finding it. I didn't have to deal with a flat tire. I wasn't on the side of the road needing to wait a couple hours for a, a tow truck or you know, maintenance or somebody to come by. So it really worked out great of thinking of all these blessings. So it was worth a $40 Uber ride. I know that sounds expensive. It all depends on where you live, the time of day you take it, but it was $40. So well worth it because in that investment, I made a connection. We both have each other's information and you never know what can come out of it because he was telling me of the celebrities and the TV personalities and attorneys and people that he, that's been in his SUV that he's picked up. And I said, all right, I'm a publicist. I'm a journalist. I'm in media. Someone, everyone always needs someone like me. So here you go. And if someone signs a contract with me and they pay me, I will bounce you back a referral fee. And you can't beat that. <laughs> uh, lastly, I want to go ahead and share this. And this is, I just got this today. This week in NFL history. All right. Pro Football Hall of Fame running back Jim Brown never missed a game. He played all 122 Cleveland Brown games, including postseason, over his nine NFL seasons from 1957 to 1965, and during those nine seasons, week after week, opponents obviously game-planned to stop him. However, big shout-out to him, and that is this week in NFL history. I, I, I cover NFL. I interview NFL athletes. When this came to me, I definitely wanted to add this into the morning lineup. And with that, our biggest headliner for today... You all know him best, NASCAR Xfinity Series driver. He's an avid outdoorsman, and he claims to be a horrible speller. But we're not going to let anybody know that because I have an editor, and anytime he needs me or if he needs the assistance of my editor, I will set him up. His name is Mr. Jeffrey Earnhardt. Welcome to the show. Hey, Stephen. I appreciate you having me on today. Uh, it's well worth it. You just got back from, I don't know if you would consider it a holiday or a trip, but what did you do? Was it everything you set out to accomplish? Um, yeah, I mean, a uh, good buddy of mine lives up in New York and uh, has a bunch of hunting land and got the opportunity to go up there and hang out with him and uh, get outdoors a little bit and, and enjoy uh, a little bit of a, a stress, stress relief. I tell everyone uh, the reason I love anything outdoors is because that's my way of decompressing over uh over crazy race uh race life that we live so uh had a blast had a great time and got to hang out with some uh some really good friends and uh and enjoy the time with them so i would uh i would always call that a success oh yeah definitely a success you did a really great video most recently for thanksgiving season how was that for you what did you do did did you do everything like what you said in the video? Did you have really good family or friends connections? Did you top it off with a couple cocktails? Did you let loose a little bit and not get too stuffed too fat? Oh, I, <laughs> I definitely got too stuffed and too fat, but, um, <laughs> no, I, I had, had a great time with, uh, friends and family and, uh, girlfriend's family and, uh, ate a lot of delicious food and, um, and, and, and enjoyed a, a couple, uh, adult beverages as well. But, um, really just enjoyed spending time with, uh, with, you know, the great people that I've been blessed with in my life. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, you 
can't have them all there at the same time, unfortunately. But uh, if I could, I would have had every single one that uh, I consider a great friend there because it's uh, it's definitely a nice time to to be thankful for and uh, and, and you know remember that you know we're all blessed with uh, a lot of great people in our lives and uh, and it's a good time to to bring everyone together. So. And like I said, you can get really fat and happy after you get done eating. So mm-hmm. it was uh, it was it was a lot of fun though. You had shared and posted from the OBX, uh, the weekend at OBX. You had wrote, "I have made in this crazy life we live friends that are there through the good and the bad, and and they are hard to find. You're feeling blessed, thankful, friends giving." I appreciate that share. The video looks incredible. You guys are on a beach. You're by the fire. You're there with the dogs. It, uh, you got that TV screen or something going on where it looks like you're watching a video uh, with Adam Sandler on there. Uh, was that a big movie screen or what was that size? It's uh, just like a little small projector. It's probably no bigger than, uh, I would say, not much bigger than the size of your uh iPhone Max these days. I mean, it, it was pretty uh, pretty impressive the the quality of the image that it, it projected off. I can't remember the the brand name, but it's uh, a lot of we we do a lot of camping, overlanding stuff. And uh, a buddy of mine, he has a a business where they outfit people to rigs, uh, Queen City Overlanding here in Charlotte. And uh, he's the one that kind of puts on that whole uh, OBX trip every year. We try to go twice a year. And, he uh he had purchased it for that trip and uh it was pretty cool we sat there we uh everyone had to bring a dish for uh for the trip because you're out on the island you take the ferry across and you're stuck out there till uh the ferry you know you're scheduled for the ferry trip back so we typically do about four days and um everyone was assigned to to bring a side dish and uh two of the guys did a ham well one of them did a ham the other one did a turkey and we uh, we had friends giving on the beach, and it was uh, it was awesome and uh, a great time to to just uh, spend spend that that quality time with friends that uh, like I said are always there for you no matter what and um, no matter how uh, how bad it gets they're uh, they're there and they got your back so it was uh, it was a lot of fun to 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 do that trip I've done it three times now and um, look forward to every one of them uh, from this point on. Do they have a local bathroom by there or how do you guys like do a shower? Because I see it's yeah. on the beach. It's like, okay, is there a restroom? <laughs> yeah. Um, most of us have uh, like a little shower tent off the side of our, our rigs uh, folds out and has like a little shower room. You got a uh, little propane instant hot water heater that gives you nice warm water. So you, you can get a bath every uh, a shower, every, uh, every couple of days at least. But um and then uh, you just bring you a bucket and uh, and put your bag in it. It's uh, roughing it a little bit, but it's it's well worth it. That's for sure. Oh well, that's a little bit too roughing it. I think I would find <laughs> a beach that has something like a public bathroom at least, and I forbid myself to even use those. Oh, God. <laughs> God bless they, you. They, they, they do have they do have public restrooms uh, yeah. right where you get off the ferry, but we uh, we try to try to get as far away from all the the mess and people as we can. You've been in the world of racing for a very long time. I would say, my opinion, I feel that you're seasoned. What are the the highs and lows to be in the profession that you're in? Because, you know, I just interviewed Connor Daly. He shared a, a great, uh, you know, be, or better understanding about IndyCar, NASCAR, and F1. I love the way he broke it down. But from your perspective, because you guys seem to come from definitely two different worlds, what do we need to know or better understand who you are as an athlete, a professional driver, and why why NASCAR, why NASCAR Xfinity, uh, when it seems like you could do anything with your life? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, uh, their heart, na- their Earnhardt name is uh, is pretty uh, a pretty well known name in the the racing world, and uh, you know, my grandfather, uh, Dell Senior, was uh, one of the greatest in our sport, and um, you know, had uh, had such a strong fan base, and was just such a impactful guy. And um, you know, before him, there was my great grandpa Ralph, and then 
you know, after my grandpa, then you had my dad, Carrie Earnhardt, then you had, you know, Dell Earnhardt Jr., my uncle, and, and even my aunt Kelly racing. So, um, grew up around it my whole life. And, um, you know, I guess, uh, I guess that that's, that's the reason I ended up doing it. Um, yeah, and, and honestly, I, I got a late start. I didn't start racing until I was 14. Um, just was growing up being a kid. And then finally one day when I was 12 was like, man, I, I want to go race. And there was a series at the local dirt track where my stepmom's from and it was 12 to 18 year olds could race in this class. And I was like, I want to race. And my dad told me, no, I begged him for two years. And he finally said, all right, we'll go find a car and sponsors. And, uh, and if you do that, then you can race. And I was like, all right. So went to some, some family friends in the area, uh, Mark for and Suzuki right there in Whistle, Virginia. Um, Tim Topham, the owner, he, uh, actually had a car for that series, uh, sitting there for sale. And he said, all right, well, I got the car. So you go find someone to help, you know, financially and you'll be set. And, uh, another really great friend of ours, uh, Jim Hilton on Cedar Springs, uh, fish, fish farm and Cedar Springs sportsman's lodge. Um, you know, raises trout, stocks the Creek for people to come fish. And he, uh, had sponsored some guys up there, as well so i was like i was like hey my dad said if i can get a car and someone to help financially um i can go racing and he was like well let's do it so um went back to my dad i was like hey i did what you said and i guess uh i guess i'm going racing and um took off from there but man it's uh it's been a roller coaster you know people don't realize um you know just because of my last name it doesn't mean that it was uh, it was always just handed to me, and, and people people like to think that way. And I, I was very blessed. At, I've been very blessed my whole life, but uh, more blessed at certain times. And uh, probably didn't realize exactly the opportunity that I was given because I was at such a young age, and um, you know, thought the streets were paved with gold. Um, when I first started racing for, uh, eventually ended up going for my grandpa's company at Dillon Hart Incorporated. Uh, you know, I just was a kid that was making a lot of money and uh just thought you know it was going to be an easy ride and then uh you know things kind of went south with DEI and they were not really any longer a race team and had uh had to figure it out from there and uh you know it was uh it's not definitely not been an easy ride but I've been uh again blessed by having amazing people get around me and uh surround myself with good people sponsors uh, and uh and, and just people that want to see me, uh, you know, continue to be able to chase my dream of, of driving a NASCAR. Um, you know, obviously the, the money is what's the, the difficult part. And, you know, uh, unfortunately I don't have a multi-billion dollar dad to pay for me to be in a car every weekend. So you have to fight and work your butt off to try and find sponsors. And that's, uh, that's really the hardest part in our, our, uh, our business. I tell people all the time, the easiest part of my job is climbing in the race car and, and strapping in and going racing. That's uh, it's crazy when you think about it like that, but it, it truly is. The good thing of it is Jeffrey is you, you had a childhood. You, you said that you started late. You started when you were 14, but how many people, especially coming from the, the type of family that you come from very athletic, like you said, it's the name. There are times to where kids start extremely early or parents require them to start very early, especially if you're, you know, of a certain ethnicity or, or, you know, religious background and kids don't have childhoods, you know, they yeah. basically have to start learning how to live the life of university by the age of five, if not beforehand to be a prodigy, you were able yeah. to live a life and be a kid. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it's it's crazy. You know, I go to the the local uh, dirt track go kart dirt track here uh, in, in Mooresville, North Carolina, and you see these kids that are five years old strapped in these go karts and going out there ripping them around at forty mile an hour. And I'm like, man, I don't even know if I was walking at four or five years old. I'm like, it's uh, it's hard to believe. But you know, when you look at it in in, in a perspective of all right, you know, say you know some of these kids you know chase elliott well, he's not kidding now but you know uh some of these drivers that started at that really really young age it's like if you look at it as starting your career when you're five years old driving go-karts to you know 30 years old in the cup series that's a pretty long career and uh 
you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to believe that, you know, kids are able to go out there and, and, and drive like that. And sometimes, you know, you, you almost wonder if, you know, the parents are pushing it too hard or, you know, you, you hope they, they don't ever get burnt out of it because, you know, it's something that they love to do. And, you know, sometimes when you start too young, like you said, you miss out on the, the, the childhood stage of your life to where there is no care in the world. And we all wish we could go back to that, that, uh, that point in time. But, um, you know, you, you, uh, you do hope that, you know, they are, uh, enjoying it and it's not something that's just being pushed upon them to, to where it's going to burn them out. There was an article published by Nick DeGroote. This was on motorsport.com. This is back on October 18th of 2016. This is what was written by a, a something or a statement you had said. It's my first Cup Series race at Talladega, my first race with BK Racing, the first time anyone from our family competes in a Toyota, and it's the 25th anniversary of my grandfather's victory at Talladega. Having this opportunity with an iconic American partner like Starter is an incredible honor. I can't remember being so pumped up for a race and sincerely appreciate our friends at Starter for their support. What are your thoughts with me reading that to you of something that you had answered in a QA? and a Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, uh, another reminder to, to be thankful for the opportunities I've been given and uh, the opportunities I've been blessed with in life because they, uh, they don't come easy and there's a million other people in this world that would give their arm and leg to, to be able to be in my shoes and, and, and get these opportunities. And, um, you know, I'm one of 40 drivers, 38 drivers that get to strapped in a car and, and, and race on the weekend. So, uh, that's, uh, something that I definitely, you know, want to <laughs> remind myself to be thankful for. And it is, uh, it is cool when you hear, you know, comments that you made in the past and, you know, makes you makes you just sit back and really think about you know how uh, how blessed I've been in life and um and hopefully continue to be blessed uh, as as my career continues in NASCAR and uh, keep uh, keep the the legacy going that you know I know my grandpa worked his butt off to build and um you know and, and continuing on uh, chasing my dreams you know that's uh it's definitely it's definitely cool to it's cool to look back on, on, you know, those times and, and think about, you know, how, uh, how special they really were. Earlier this year, August 6th, to be exact within that vicinity, Jeffrey Earnhardt treats U S army Rangers breakfast before Michigan NASCAR race. You want to tell us more about that and that experience? Yeah, we, uh, we ran an army Rangers car, um, and, uh, in the Michigan race and, was had the opportunity to bring a bunch of uh, Army Rangers out to the track for the weekend, and and uh, met them at, at breakfast the, the the morning of the race, and hung out and, and got to to listen to their stories and you know how uh, how much fun they were having just being there that weekend and just being thankful for you know a chance to for for them to get away and decompress and have a little fun and um and, and show support to to our troops and all the men and women that, you know, sacrificed their lives to, to give us the freedom to be able to go out here and, and drive race cars and, 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 you know, do all the things we love in life. That's, uh, that's something that, you know, definitely never needs to be forgotten. And, um, you know, I've always been a huge supporter of our military and, um, veterans, you know, police, you know, firemen, the, they're the ones that, uh, they keep us safe and, you know, they, don't always get the the best uh, the b- best rap on the on the streets or in the in the media, but um, I can tell you I've uh, I've definitely been thankful for for them in, in many occasions and and uh, as you hear their stories you you learn to to understand that they're they've gone through a lot of stuff that you know some of us uh, probably can never even come close to handling and it's uh, it's cool to. Just uh, just show your appreciation and, and thanks to to those men and women that do that because it's uh, they're they're better people than I am that's for sure. Speaking of sponsorships, support you and I very well. We've had conversations about this when we think about sponsorships. 
what is the misconception when we think of athletes, someone like you, anyone that is in an industry, a sport, a profession where sponsors and advertisers are the artery. They are essential for anything to happen and to be able to successfully make it happen. So when we think about NASCAR, when we think about you, Mr. Jeffrey Earnhardt, and the type of sponsorships that are out there, I've looked over your deck. I believe the price ranges are reasonable. I'm surprised they are not a lot more <laughs> because of who you are in your name. Really, they are reasonable. I mean, anybody that is a millionaire, a, a multimillionaire, a billionaire, whatever, I mean, th this is like your, your amounts are like a $4 coffee to a millionaire or a billionaire <laughs> at Starbucks. To make it very clear, where does that money go? Why is it so important and essential, not just for you to make a living, because this is your profession. You're not working all these hours and getting paid every Friday, and you don't have all these luxuries like other people do, because you're doing something that's so very different, and you're putting yourself to faith in of who you are and what you believe in and what your passion is about. But these sponsorships and being able to find support on a, on a steady basis because they can change every season and every event. You will never have the same sponsors from your last event into your next event. Yeah. I mean, How important is that money? It, it's, it's huge. You know, um, you know, people always wonder, you know, why we're not in, you know, the top rod. And it's like, well, <laughs> if you want to write a check for, you know, three to five million dollars depending on what team it is i'd be happy to take it and and drive for that big team but um you know it's uh it's all about money and and you know there's a famous line in nascar it's called speak us money how fast do you want to go and um it's the truth and it it just comes down to the the resources and um equipment and you know personnel that these big teams are able to have that you know cost money it's not you know it's that stuff don't come free. It's stuff you got to pay for. And, um, you know, the, he, he, the whole saying you get what you pay for, it's, it's a hundred percent true in our sport. You know, you, if you're, you know, going to spend $50,000 a race instead of $150,000, well, you're probably going to get a <laughs> hundred thousand dollars less of performance than, than what the other guy is. So, um, you know, and, and that, the money goes to, you know, getting the car to the track on the weekends, paying for the pit crews, paying for, you know, the, the engine lease, you know, the engine lease program for the years of almost a million dollars alone. So, um, you know, it, it adds up quick, you know, a set of tires is $2,500 a set. We run six sets a weekend. Um, you know, so, so it doesn't take long to, to add all that money up and, and be able to show where the money's going. But, you know, at the same time, you know, as a sponsor, you want to, you want to get, you know, you want to get a return on what, whatever you're spending and, uh, and see value and in, in what you're putting your money into. And, you know, I've, you know, everyone wants to think that I've had it easy. And like I said, I've, I've been very blessed and there's people that have had a lot worse than me, but I've also busted my ass to get to where I'm at and, and to continue to race, you know, year in and year out. But, um, I know, you know, how valuable that dollar is because I've worked my butt off sometimes wondering if I'm going to, you know, be able to make the money I need to live. You know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's not easy to ask of, you know, $3 million, $5 million, whatever it is from, from someone when, when you know how, uh, how valuable that, that money actually is. So we try to do all we can to, to make sure that they're getting the return that they want and, and they're happy with their, their partnership. Cause if, if they're happy with the, uh, with the results that we've given them, then, you know, it'll be a partnership that you hope that will last forever. And, um, I'm blessed. One of my partners I have currently is, uh, for everyone, they, uh, they sell and install synthetic turf and, uh, and they've been a true blessing to, to me, not just in my career, but in my life as a whole, they've, um, helped me a lot in my, my personal life to, to, you know, just be a better person and, and, 
and want to continue to to work hard. So they uh, they've been a huge blessing in 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 my career and my life, and, and just you know, and just really uh, really means a lot to me. But you know, you, you work your butt off whenever you know whenever people you know have that kind of impact on your life. You want to work your butt off to to make sure that they see that return and. Um, and that's what we try to do with any partner that we bring in just to, to, to make sure that, you know, we're, uh, we're doing our part and, you know, if we do that, then everyone should be happy and, uh, everything should be, uh, a lot of fun and, um, and we can, uh, try and show them a return on, on what they've invested. Cause, uh, like I said, it's definitely, it's a lot of money and, and I get that. So, um, we try to do our best. When we think about the money. And if you can enlighten us a little bit more, you you have this money. It's there for you to make a living, to take care of yourself, pay your bills. Are you also out of that money? Are you legally and financially responsible for the the post repair of the cars? Is it to where you're using that money and say two, three million dollars? Are you leasing the vehicle? Like what exactly uh, to make it very clear? Because you're also... um, you're helping me to better understand it. Where, where does that money really go into? You you said $2,500 for tires and everything else, but, but at the same time, it's like, what do you really have to show for it? If you don't own the car? Yeah. So, you know, basically the way NASCAR works is, you know, say you got a sponsor for three and a half million dollars and you go, all right, well, we got this money set aside. Now, what race team do we want to drive for? And then you shop around and figure out what race team you want to drive for. So then you go to them, you say, hey, you know, what's it cost to to run for your program and uh, and compete with y'all? And, you know, they say, you know, three and a half million dollars. You're like, all right, well, I got three and a half million dollar sponsorship. Sign an agreement to race for them with, you know, X sponsor that you have and, um, that money goes to the team and then the team will pay me my salary for driving the race car and, um, you know, and, in return, well, like I said, we try to do as much B2B activation as we can, um, you know, tri- uh, conferences, uh, you know, trade shows, whatever it is that, you know, helps, you know, grow or, or, or show a, a return on, on that company's investment is, is what we, we try to go out of our way to do. So, you know, obviously they get the whole car wrapped on track and, you know, that's considered advertisement, but, you know, we try to be proactive and, and give them a lot more than just that. You know, I think the days of just slapping a sticker on the car and, and putting it on the racetrack are kind of, uh, you know, dwindling away. So, we try to try to do more and, and make it where, you know, there is a noticeable return on, on their investment to where, you know, say if it, if Coca-Cola is your sponsorship and you go to talk to Wendy's who's on Joe Blow's car and you say, hey, y'all put Coca-Cola in y'all's stores and we'll give y'all space on the race car. That's a B2B play that, you know, you would try to do. So it's a... Uh, it's definitely more challenging, you know, than it used to be back in the old days where the sponsors called you wanting to slap their sticker on the car. Um, but you know, that's, uh, that's just all part of adapting and overcoming and, and, and figuring it out. You know, um, if you want it bad enough, you find a way to do it. And that's, uh, that's kind of what we've tried to do and, uh, try to be men of our word and, 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 you know, give people what they, uh, what they want out of our program. When I think about this and, as you're sharing and I'm processing this in my head as I'm seeing it through the lens of say a producer and director for a film, a music artist that's signed with a label. Do you do tours at all? Like let's say if it's uh, so we're going to go back to, I'm going to go to your sponsors. So one of your main sponsors and you shared about it was forever lawn. So let's say if you were, like I said, I'm seeing this as if you're a music artist would you go around and do many events at all talking about forever long or doing like what I uh, consider a meet and greets. And then you just have a step and repeat with the forever lawn on there. Maybe the NASCAR logo 
possibly your name. And then what you're doing is you're spreading awareness about not only who you are and a type of car that you're going to be racing and the event that you're going to be out, um, out at, but at the same time, in these speaking engagements, you're doing press you're doing, you know, fan materials, once again, on those step and repeat carpets, potentially if there could be other investors or sponsors or fans there that could get more involved, maybe go ahead and hire Forever Lawn for something, uh, possibly invest in you. Am I getting that correctly of how I processed everything you just said to me? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I would say most of our events are more like trade show based, so um being at the trade shows signing autographs uh mingling with people coming by the booth um talking to them about the turf and um you know what what the capabilities are you know pros cons all that stuff um i would say trade shows is more of what we do you know and we call it we call that a meet and greet but um yeah i mean any events, you know, Forever Lawn's got 90-something dealers all across the U.S. And, you know, if one of those dealers has, you know, a contract they're working on and, and having a hard time getting it through and they feel like, you know, there's value to me, you know, coming out and, and you know, being present to, to hang out and eat dinner with whoever that contract's with, and, you know, we do that. Like, I mean, you know, we go above like i said we try to go above and beyond you know whatever someone's expectations are and, and and make sure that they're happy in the the end result because you know like i said if if, if they're not happy then it's not good for anyone and uh definitely don't want to have someone feeling like they didn't get their their money's worth or get value out of uh out of our partnership and um and so that's why we we try to do anything we can trade shows meet and greets um <laughs> show up at birthday parties if we have to you, you, you never know what uh what, what someone might ask but um definitely uh definitely been through a lot and and, and seen a lot in my days but uh you know like i said as long as we uh are of our word and, and try to exceed expectations then you know we know that we did everything we could to make it a, a successful partnership give us some more clarity or more specifically i'm going to ask myself when we think about the level of car that you're able to get for a race, depending on the resources and finances that you have. Can you be the best driver in the world, yet the quality of the car that you're using to race, can that make or break the performance of what you can do as an athlete and a professional driver? Is it all on the car? Is it all on you? Or is it 50-50, the car and you? Um, I mean, I would, I would say it's both, um, you know, I mean, shoot, I've ran for teams that had such a low budget. We ran on scuffed tires that other teams were throwing away, you know? So, um, you know, how do you expect to go out and run guys that are bolting new tires on when you're bolting their used ones on? So, um, it is the whole package. I mean, everything's gotta be there from the race car itself, the setup, the crew chief, the pit crew guys that, you know, do the pit stops, the driver, he's got to be able to be physically fit and, you know, not fall the seat whenever it's, you know, 140 something degrees inside the race car in the middle of summer. So it, it's truly the whole package. You know, some people are like, Oh, I just put a good motor in it. And it's like, well, you put a good motor in it. Well, you're going to be going faster down the straightaway when you get to the corner. It's really not going to want to turn. So, you uh you really have to have the full package and that's that's how you 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 become successful in, in, in racing and um you know you can't really credit it to just one thing that you need it's it's uh it's the whole whole shebang you know you, you can't just take the best driver and stick him in a crappy car and expect he's gonna win the race he's he's got to have the the tools to be able to go out there and and show his craft and and show what he's capable of doing so um you know, there's there's definitely guys that can overperform their equipment, but you know, when you get to the the you know top five guys in in the running order for that weekend, it's it's the best of the best with the best equipment. So um, it's pretty hard to to, to outrun with just talent. You you got to have a, a car that's capable of it at the same time. It's almost having to be so strategic yet 
to be able to improvise just as good as you doing several attempts of trying to do the 360 on a water board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gl I'm glad you got that. I, I wasn't meaning to pull a funny, but I, because I found and I remember seeing that video, what you just shared is what I had seen on your Instagram and remembering you doing or trying to do that 360. Or actually, you did do it, but you uh, um, you held could, on as long as you could. I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's 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 like anything, you know. You you got to have repetition and and seat time, and you got to be doing it with the the best equipment uh, that allows you to be able to do it. So, um, you know, it's, I feel like it's like that with a lot of things in life and, you know, even everyday life, you, you get, you get out of it, what you put in. And, you know, if you don't have everything, you know, in the right order in life, then you're gonna have a hard time, you know, achieving your goals. So it's trying to achieve your goals. And it, it's kind of a funny because you're going to know where I'm coming at with this, but I'm also being serious at the same time, you know how to fish. You're an avid fisher. Is going through life, when we think about sponsorships and support and everything that else for you to even find balance and in, in, in how you take care of your physique, is it just the same as catching a catfish, especially the size of catfish as you catch? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I feel like... Uh... I feel like the, the catfishing is a little bit easier, but, um, I mean, you know, it, it, it is, you know, it, it's a lot of time, it, you know, the, doing the noodle and stuff. We, uh, we put a lot of work and time into getting out there to try and make sure we're catching big fish. And, um, you know, you always want to catch that next biggest fish, you know, and, uh, keep improving every year. And, um, I guess it's the same, you know, with, uh, with racing and with sponsors, you know, it's like, you know, you have great sponsors, but you want more because then that allows you to chase your dream even more and, um, and, and race more, race in different series if you want. Um, and, 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 you know, same with, you know, driving a race car. It's like, all right, you had a good race. All right, well, get get some more. Let's go. I, I feel like, you know, people used to get so mad at Kyle Busch when he would be mad at the world for running second. And I'm like, how, how can you be mad at the guy? Like he, he didn't win the race and he's a competitor and he wants to win. I, I, I love the guy. I think he's awesome. I think, you know, his, uh, his drive to want to be the absolute best out on the track every weekend, week out at every little thing. I mean, he dissects his race down to just incredible depths that, whenever I, you know, got to understand a little bit of it, I was like, holy cow, this guy, he gets it. He gets that it takes every little piece to, to go out there and be success, successful. And I feel like he could win a hundred races in a row and he's still going to be mad wanting to win more. So that's, uh, that's how you got to be. And you got to be that way in life. You got to wake up every morning and figure out, you know, how to make each day better and, and keep pushing forward. And that's, uh, that's how you achieve success in my eyes. You know, it could be wrong, but, um, that's how I feel about it. I appreciate that. And before we close out, I want to go back to the August 14th video of you teaching us and showing us how to carve a catfish. Uh, you were talking about and sharing, uh, when we think of Dow strong, uh, the knife that you were using, they're actually one of your sponsors, right? Yeah, yeah correct. They're some of the best knives I've ever used. I mean, they're, uh, material is amazing, sharp as can be, hold a razor sharp edge. I mean, people, you know, say all the, you know, they just say that stuff because they're paying them. Well, yeah, they're paying us, but I truly love their products. They're some of the best knives I've ever gotten the opportunity to put my hands on and um, make, uh, make carving up catfish a lot easier. <laughs> I, and those are the same knives. I knew they were. I went back to it. Those are the same knives in a video back on November 17th. We're uh, cutting a salami where you guys are on a beach over there. Yeah. It was, uh, on OBX. OBX. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, I, I have a, a really nice knife roll that um, Dow Strong makes as well. And I put all my favorite knives in there and, and take them with me when I travel to, 
to make sure I, I have uh, have what I need whenever it comes time to uh, chopping some stuff up. So um, they, uh, they, they've been a, a lot of fun to, to work with as well. They're just a, a really cool brand with really, uh, really incredible knives and um, got the opportunity to do a lot of fun stuff with those guys as well. And, um, you know, look forward to many more years with those guys. I know uh, during COVID they, they took a, pretty uh tough league just like everyone else but um you know we we've, we've worked through uh continuing our partnership and hopefully continue it for for many more years and and helping them sell uh sell some incredible knives because uh every time i put one in someone's hands they, they they're really impressed and um you know that's uh that's that's the whole goal is to to get the word out there of how uh, how awesome their stuff really is i would love to find out what my good friend uh Matt Wright would say from Naked and Frayed XL, the legendary champion. I, I don't know if you ever watched the show, but yeah. I would love to know what Matt would have to say about those knives because those are a nice set, and he loves his knives. We'll have to we'll have to find a way to get some in his hands. See what he uh, see what his opinions are on. I, I can set you up with him. I'll put in yeah. uh, do a group text, let him know, and uh, go from there. I mean, that would be awesome. And he's actually, I don't believe he's in Florida. So he's not that far oh, really? from you. Yeah, I, awesome. he, he lives yeah. in Florida, and he also lives in Colorado. Oh, nice. Two, yeah. uh, two great states. Absolutely. I, I'll give him a call. That'd be, that'd be cool. I'd li like, to, like to hear his, his opinion. Any closing thoughts at all? Um, I mean, you know, just, uh, you know, I just want everyone to continue to to be thankful and blessed in life because you know uh, tomorrow's not promised to any of us and um, you know if you uh, if you get to wake up on the right side of the dirt every morning I, I consider that a pretty good day but um, you know work hard uh, don't give up on dreams you know that's one of the big things that you know people uh, ask me like you know how how do I you know, become a race car driver. And I t always tell these kids, I'm like, man, just don't give up. You know, you'll get a million no's and people will knock you down a hundred times, but you got to get back up and keep fighting. And, uh, that's how you become successful. So, um, you know, don't, uh, don't give up and, and keep fighting and keep pushing. If you want it bad enough, you find a way to get it. So, um, that's, uh, that's probably the, the, the biggest thing I try to remember. And, you know, it's, uh, it's easy, you know, we all have, have days that aren't that great, but, you know, when you, when you stop and you, you sit down you just kind of run those things through your head, you're like, man, I'm, I'm blessed to, to be here on this earth today and, uh, do what I'm, do what I love for a living. And, um, you know, when it gets hard, I, I just re remind myself to, to, to work my butt off. Cause if I want it bad enough, I'll make it happen. So. And you already are, <clears throat> excuse me. You already are making it happen. And I'm impressed. I'm, I'm looking forward to catching one of your, race is live you know you already know i'm here to support you any any way in every way that i can it's truly an honor to be connected and i said it before and i'll say it again i'm grateful that you know yourself and you trust yourself well enough uh, to know what decisions to make what relationships to get involved with when we think of you know personal professional you're you're moving in the right direction you're 34 years old you've got so much to look forward to you're healthy you're fit you've got a great career and once again i definitely got to find out from matt Wright what he's going to say about them <laughs> knives thank you definitely uh, definitely got found that out uh, any uh shout outs at all anything that you want to highlight before we close out today um i mean obviously you know uh just want to thank everyone that has uh, allowed me to to get to where I am in in life and and in my career to 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 be able to continue to chase my dreams. Um, you know, working on uh, signing uh, three three to four race deal uh, right now for uh, for next season. Can't uh, can't can't spread all the the details yet, but um, you know. Unfortunately, that's that's all the races we have sold so far. But like I said, we uh, we're gonna keep working and pushing hard to to get more sold. Um, but uh, thankful for Forever Lawn for continuing their support, Dow Strong, um, Advanced Material Handling. Uh, I was, like I said, I've been been blessed to have a lot of great partners that have allowed me to continue to 
chase my dreams and uh i always want to want to make sure that people uh people hear those names because they're the, the only reason i get to do what i love I appreciate them. I appreciate you. Thank you again, Jeffrey, for being with us today on Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. We'll be having you on again soon. Absolutely. I appreciate y'all having me on. Anytime, every time. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Definitely check the schedule on the iOS app or power985.com for all upcoming shows. We will be re-airing this show with Mr. Jeffrey Earnhardt, NASCAR Xfinity Series driver and an avid outdoors man. And he claims to be a horrible speller. But once again, we will always have an editor on hand to make sure nobody knows better. Have a great day, everyone. A great weekend. I, I'm still surprised it's Friday. But yes, it's Friday. I'm looking forward to... Uh, all the exciting things that are happening that are coming up this year. I know you are as well. And my advice to you is this. Do not spend your money or waste your money on somebody this holiday season who didn't care to call you, who didn't care to invite you out for lunch or coffee, who ignored you almost if not all year long, do not spend or waste your money on getting a Christmas or a holiday gift to tell somebody, hey, thank you for forgetting about me and not allowing me to feel important in your life. Here's a Christmas gift in holiday season. All I have to say is F that. Keep your money to yourself. Buy yourself a Christmas gift. Or more importantly, you can sponsor Mr. Jeffrey Earnhardt's upcoming race, help him get better cars, you know, Help with the sponsorships and everything else. Big shout out to all of his sponsors, Forever Long. We also have Midnight Moon. We've got Dow Strong. And then also Advanced Material Handling Systems. All great things, Jeffrey Earnhardt. You can head on over to his website at jeffreyearnhardt.com. We'd love to see one of your sponsorships. I'm looking forward to one day having a spon having my company logo on his page, and I'm not... BSing, I mean that with all my heart. And when I come in, I like to come in big. I'm very competitive. I like to be number one. I don't mean to sound like Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory, but yes, I do want it and I want it now. Also, additionally, all great things, Mr. Jeffrey Earnhardt. Head on over to his Instagram at jearnhardt1. Have a great holiday season, everyone. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.